بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته جزاكم الله خير for tuning in to today's episode of Adai's Diary Today inshallah ta'ala we have yet another person from our community here in Dallas Actually the first one from here in Dallas So far we've been all over the nation But today we bring it back home here in Dallas, Texas One of our very dear brothers Abdullah Ma'moon from the Muslim Legal Fund of America uh, he's a deputy executive direc- director there, uh, and Abdullah is going to share some of uh, what made him who he is today and how he became the Abdullah that we all know, that everyone loves in the community. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Abdullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Jazakallah khair. How's Ustaz everything? Jazakallah khair for inviting me. Uh, I'm really excited to be here and. Uh, I'm at here and ready to answer some of your questions, inshallah. Inshallah ta'ala. Well, today, basically, it's just going to be a casual conversation. Uh, and we already spoke about the program and what it's about. But we want, want you to tell us uh, how you got to do what you're doing today. Uh, was it always your dream or is it something that just happened in your life that got you into working uh, working in this field like what you're doing is is like it's it's something that you really have to have a passion for right uh, so yeah yeah is it something you started with or you you just kind of you know did on you, you there was a point where you shifted and changed no, that's a that's a very uh, good question and very uh, long answer and uh, for this question uh, obviously we don't have that much time uh, but what I want to share with you all is something that's going to answer this question, number one. But at the same time, I want to share with you all where I'm coming from. The industry or the world, uh, the, the, the industry, I guess, the, uh, that I work in, uh, it's very new compared to what other communities have, uh, especially in the civil rights and um, civil liberties arena. For the Muslim realm, there are very, very, very few organizations uh, MLFA and others that are doing this work. So for a person like me who's almost 40, for us to think and growing up in America to say, hey, I want to do this, that wasn't the case. However, at the same time, what I did have in my mind and I've always wanted to do, which is that I want to do something that is going to be beneficial to my family, to myself, and to society at large. And with that mentality, with that thought process, whatever I did in life, uh, in, in all these different uh, career paths that I've taken in the past, it was always about how can I not only benefit myself and my family, but also society. So when I joined MLFA or the Muslim League of Fund of America, our objective was to make sure that the people that are voiceless has a voice, people that are oppressed, we stand with them. So it wasn't always that, hey, I wanted to be the executive director, deputy executive director of a civil rights organization. It was more of how can I help? What can I do to make sure that my work and my effort and my being uh, is for the development and the growth of our community? And this work, uh, if you don't know, is number one, thankless, tireless. Uh, you're away from family and there's a lot of work that the media and and everyone doesn't see. And it is very, very, unfortunately, difficult work to do. And not that many people want to do it. It's not really glamorous. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you tawfiq and increase of your likes. Uh, I'm sure we we didn't fill a fraction of the void that we have here in America that are of people that are doing what you're doing. so, so there's a, still a lot of work to do, but I, what I wanted to, like what I understood from your answer is that this wasn't your field of study. Is this what you, right. like, did you study anything uh, to do with law in, in school or did you do something completely different? Well, you know, what's interesting is that, uh, especially during COVID-19 uh, or, you know, this pandemic that, uh, arena that we, we're in now, I've been doing a lot of these virtual meetings and actually doing a lot of uh, net, ethnic and network uh, programs. Mm. I actually went to school for Middle Eastern studies, which is comprised of anthropology, theology, and politics. Uh, what it seemed like at the time when I was an undergrad is that I was gonna work, end up working at the UN because I grew up in New York City 
uh, in the in the East Coast, and many of my classmates and schoolmates that were that I was studying with did end up going and working at the UN, and I actually ran a number of seminars and conferences with some of my professors who sponsored me to be part of the uh, the UN efforts that many of my uh, academic uh, colleagues uh, were involved in. Mm. However, for one reason or another. I went into television because that's the other side of what people do when they get a degree mm-hmm. in the field that I get in, uh, which is that either you're in politics or you're in in, in television. And when in television, you work specifically in in the news industry because of the uh, subject matter. And again, Subhanallah, this is the qadr of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, which is that I didn't go into the editorial news side of it. What I ended okay. up doing is I went into the technical side. Uh, mm. So I am, and that's even oftentimes... further from what you're doing here. I'm sorry. And that's even further from what you're doing oh, right yeah, now. Oh yeah, completely, completely. Oh uh, wow. I went into, I not only did I not go into something that I wasn't, you know, ever trained for, but I went started working for Fox News, and not only that, I started working with them on the technical side. So after working six months, I realized that mm. for me to go further in this industry, I really needed to get training. So from there, I moved on to a production company and actually worked in a machine house or machine room, which is uh, where you have a bunch of bunch of uh, you know CPUs, uh, videotape wow. recorders, and wow. other systems that are involve networking, that involve broadcast, and a whole bunch of other uh, technical um, elements. So and wait, wait, wait. Well, I'm understanding because so, we're we're limited on time here. And you, you did something <laughs> completely, completely different. But now completely in the realm of, but now in this realm. That in the, in brings the, me back to what I was saying is that for that, I wanted to help people. I wanted to get into the media as Muslims. But okay, what I okay. realized, that wasn't that's it a good, for me. That's a good ambition to have too. Because right. we don't have media presence. And I could understand how you, um, you can uh, see that, uh, you see a void that needs to be filled in the media as far as like presence of Muslimin and their opinions out there especially like if you you were saying Fox News yeah I mean, that's where <laughs> that's where they like perhaps the biggest void is right but uh, but then you completely shifted out of this right and you went into right. the MLFA right and was this shift difficult a lot of people would see it as as a big sacrifice right uh, they could see that you, you would have been much more successful in, in the other field. And then you come to the Islamic field, perhaps took a, took a hit on the pay, and uh, you, you're away from your family more. You sacrificed a lot of things to do this. Uh, was it a tough decision to make, or was it easy? The first time I went to Umrah was back in 2000. And holding the Kaaba, I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give me what is good for me in my life. Mm. And any decision that I make, I especially the big ones, whatever mm. comes to my mind uh, as the first option, I take. Because for me, I believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted that dua of mine. Mashallah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever is good for me, Allah will give. That's a beautiful uh, mindset to have. If there's a way. doubt in my heart, I don't, I don't go and, and, and take it. So when I was offered mm. the deputy executive director position with MLFA, I believe it was on April 4th. I moved down to Dallas on April 7th. So it, again, it's, it's just like that for me. I make quick decisions, not hasty decisions, but quick decisions because whatever is in my heart, I think it's, it's an inspiration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah and the sacrifices and all those other struggles that you mentioned, indeed, there's a lot of sacrifices. Of course. I could not be doing what I'm doing without my family support. Of I couldn't course. be doing what I'm doing without the people that's around me. Uh, but when you sacrifice for the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I believe you gain so much more in, from mm-hmm. other places, and indeed, Allah is always, always uh, merciful, and 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 the graciousness from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala appears in our lives in in so many ways. So now you so, left, you left, uh, you left your field of study, your field of expertise, something you had a passion for, especially the tech side of it, right? Uh, and then you come into this realm, the Islamic realm. And mashallah, you, you proved to be very, I think you do it with passion. You know, you're one of the first people I met here in, uh, in Dallas when I moved here. 
and you definitely had an impact on me, and I'm sure you did on many of the community members. You know, everybody knows you. Whenever you say Abdullah, Abdullah Ma'moon, everybody's like, oh, Abdullah Ma'moon, that brother, you know, everybody, everybody, mashallah, knows you to be that, that kind brother that's always there well, for them to help out. Well, you haven't, uh, you haven't met the people that don't like me, so... Uh, no, 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 we don't, we don't care <laughs> about that. You know, we, we want, we want, to, let's talk about the people that like you. Alhamdulillah. So, uh, you did all of this, subhanAllah, you sacrificed a lot. There's no doubt that you sacrificed a lot in, uh, in, in the shift in your life, right? Leaving what you actually majored in. Right, and your degree, and then you worked at Fox News, and you did what you had a passion for, the whole technical side of, of, of media and all that. And then you came to this realm, you know, to the, to the MLFA and the Islamic realm. And Alhamdulillah Rabbil Ameen, you've net, networked yourself very well. And a lot of people, Alhamdulillah, in the community know you. Uh, we all love you. And, and I'm sure you found barakah in this in, in, your, in your life, in your family. Right? Have you found this barakah for like making this sacrifice? No doubt it was hard. Uh, every sacrifice is difficult, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always replaces it with barakah. Have you found this barakah in your life? Uh, indeed, there's tremendous amount of barakah. Alhamdulillah. However, uh, for me, leaving what I left behind, to me, it wasn't really sacrifice. Uh, that was more of, if I didn't have the passion for it, I didn't feel that I was putting up and, and doing enough uh, because there's a famous hadith that I like to mention over and over. It's more for me than anyone else, which is that on the day of judgment, we'll be raised. We can't move an inch without answering certain questions. Mm. And one of them is, how, what was your contribution, right? With your intelligence, with your wealth, with your health, uh, with your youth. So regardless of what I'm doing whether it be uh, it's more or less than someone else, it's on what I've done. It's on my myself. So for me, that wasn't a sacrifice. It was more of, hey, I, I kind of lost passion for it. Alhamdulillah, I'm very, very good uh, at what I was doing. Perhaps, you know, if I want to go back, uh, I, I don't see it being that difficult to go back. Uh, it would probably require some uh, additional reading and, and training uh, because I've been out of it for so long. However, uh, it's easy, but the passion wasn't there. Right now with MLFA and, and the work that we do, it requires lots of um, dedication. And this dedication is not about a paycheck because we don't get a pay, paid a lot for the work that we do, right? Uh, we don't uh, get the praise and, and, and the applauds. Alhamdulillah, the brothers and sisters that receive the help, they, they really appreciate it. But it's not like a, a, I'm not a celebrity. It's not like something like that. It's not for that at all. It is for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we don't really want any of those things. What we want is from the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What we want is make sure that we, we actually have impact in society, impact uh, within our, our community. Because the work that we do at MLFA and other civil rights and civil liberty organizations, it's, and, 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 and you can ask anyone and I'll t and they'll probably say the same thing, which is that, the work they do is because of what? For the generations to come, for the people, for the other rather than some, themselves. And that in itself is a satisfaction that I've always wanted. That is something that I've always um, geared towards. And that was what I initially had in my mind when I was studying. And that was the objective. And that was the only common factor, common uh, thread between my uh, multiple career uh, paths. And that's what led me to here. And if uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills that he dragged me from MLFA or this industry to something else, it will be probably the same thing, which is that it's for the pleasure and, and benefit of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. To use uh, certain servants for his cause. I'm sure, Shay Abdullah, you, you never thought you were going to stand on a minbar and give a khutbah when you were studying in college, right? <laughs> Never. Or when you went uh, to Fox I, I refuse to give khutbah. Even today, I, I don't like giving a khutbah. But you I do, though. I'm forced to give a khutbah. I, you I, do, I though. give it. I, I'm forced to. I, you I, give I do plenty not of like khutbah. giving khutbahs. SubhanAllah. So you were just put in this place, alhamdulillah, and you became, uh, you became what we call a da'i, but not necessarily a da'i that received 
formal Islamic education somewhere, but someone who had that passion, who carried their Islam in their heart, it was part of them, it was part of their identity, and they lived with it, and they found its barakah in their life. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you, to bless your family, and to bless all the Muslims that are working for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all over the world. Amen. Every Muslim should be a da'i in their own respect Amen. and in their own field, right? Uh, is there Absolutely. any like, final Absolutely. one minute piece of advice for the youngsters out there that are trying to find their place in, uh, in this field, you know? Uh, whatever you do in life, whatever you do in life, make sure that number one uh, objective for you is that you are a Muslim. And if you're a Muslim, a good Muslim, you become a good Muslim engineer, good Muslim doctor, good Muslim lawyer, good Muslim whatever. Right, and it's not uh, this this message or this flag or this banner of Islam is not only carried by shuyukh and ustad, right? It's carried by us as Muslims, right? People don't read Quran and Hadith; they read the Muslims' character and and who they are, how they yeah. treat people. Obviously, we all have flaws. Obviously, we have all these shortcomings. But beyond that, how do you actually? Treat someone, what is your yes. morals, what are your values? They look at that. And regardless of what industry you're in, you're giving da'wah. So mm -hmm. uh, Alhamdulillah, MLFA is really close to the Muslim realm. But even outside of the Muslim realm, I got to tell you this story before I end because I wasn't even thinking. While I was working in production, uh, in, in broadcast production, my immediate manager actually accepted Islam in my hand, Alhamdulillah. Because the conversations that we've always had, I mean, again, he accepted Islam a year yeah. later after I left the job. But the conversation we kept on having is about Quran and, and the very different injustices around the world. And this is in television. This is, and uh, in, Allah talking opened in Fox up his heart. News. I, I, I what, didn't quite hear, hear that. Was this in Fox News? No, it wasn't in Fox News. Oh, okay, uh, yeah, because I, I wouldn't think. <laughs> yeah, not nothing against yeah. Fox, Fox News uh, per se, but you know, I, I would think it'll be way more difficult to get somebody there to convert them than no, probably CNN. You know, Did you say you worked in CNN number as well? that work there, so. Alhamdulillah, yeah, of course, of course. But, so, but I'm sure uh, the whole point, inshallah, is that it was filled with uh, barakah. A Muslim carries his Islam uh, wherever they go. So please, inshallah, take this deen, understand it, make it part of your identity, make it part of your character, and know that you are the ambassador of Islam in whichever field you decide to go in, and whichever uh, direction you decide to go in your life, inshallah ta'ala. And with this, inshallah, we're going to thank uh, Brother Abdullah for joining us uh, today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Barakallah fiqh habibi wa jazana wa iyaak And uh, inshallah we'll end the episode right here Please stay tuned for our next uh, program uh, Da'i's Diary inshallah Barakallah fiqhum we, uh, we will be coming at you with some more programs Bi'idhnillah ta'ala Stay tuned if you didn't subscribe Please subscribe right here on the bottom Inshallah ta'ala And if you have any suggestions Please don't hesitate to just share it with us on the comments or go to epicmasjid.org and send us an email with your comments, with your suggestions, inshallah. We'll be more than happy to take them. Barakallah feekum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And thank you for tuning in. فَمَنْ تَعَجَّلَ فِي يَوْمَيْنِ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ وَمَنْ تَأَخَّرَ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ لِمَنِ اتَّقَى وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْهِ تُحْشَرُونَ